Welcome to Talking Art edition number two. We have three great artists for our clients to watch in the market. Jean Davis, Julian Steincheck, and John Grillo. They meet the criteria of everything we look for when we buy art. A strong visual identity, an important place in art history, and simply just a wonderful visual aesthetic, because at the end of the day, art is something that we simply enjoy and live with. Jean Davis was a member of the Washington Color School movement. This movement included such artists as Morris Lewis, Kenneth Noland, Thomas Downing, and Paul Reed, to name a few. What defined this movement is that they like to work on unprimed canvas using a stain technique, not brushwork, and of course, exploring color theory. Davis's best known works are his stripe paintings, where he uses alternating bands of color, arranged randomly like you would in a musical score. He likened himself to a jazz musician who would intuitively play by ear. In terms of the market, artists like Gene Davis and others who are part of this broader hard edge movement in art are all going to ascend in value. Why? Because you could still get their major canvases like this one and because they have the look of the future. Julian Steincheck had a poignant but inspiring life story. He was born in Poland and during World War II was sent to a concentration camp where he lost the use of his right arm and he was right-handed. In 1942, he escapes the camp and ultimately ended up in a Polish refugee camp in Uganda, Africa. He receives a BFA from the Cleveland Institute of Art and later trains under Joseph Albers at Yale University. His first major exhibition is at the Martha Jackson Gallery in New York, and his style is solidified as one of the op art movement's artists of the 1960s, which prevailed into the 1980s. This work recently came out of a corporate collection in Detroit, Michigan. It's the first time it's been back in the marketplace in a long time. And it's just a great example of how he employs geometric forms over gradiated color that's very carefully orchestrated for optical effect. You can look at this in terms of it moving convexly towards you or concavely away from you. A lot of the same reasons that Davis is going up in value apply to Steincheck as well. The op art movement really went out of vogue for a while, but it's back. And as we look at our lives and the fact that cryptocurrencies, digital art and technology is the space that we're living in going forward, art like this lives incredibly well in that environment. We just discussed two artists that created incredibly consistent bodies of work. And now we move to John Grillo, who had a very different career. He moved from period to period and greatly varied his style. So we advise our clients to look at his work and learn his different periods and what appeals to them the most. He did a series of yellow verse paintings and he did works that are very similar to Hans Hoffmann. And then we have these marvelous color grid paintings that he did. We placed two John Grillo's in museum collections in the past couple of years, but they're very difficult to come by. So these are for collectors who enjoy the chase and the hunt of the rare work. Very important in art, aside from the market and who the artist is and what their career was about, is sometimes your personal relationship with the piece. When I look at this piece, it reminds me of when I was very young as a child and I would have Legos spread out on the floor and the primary color of those plastic pieces just enthralled me as a child. I get the same feeling when I look at the John Grillo. Also when I look at this piece, for me it brings me back to Georges Seurat's pointillist techniques and the possibility that perhaps John Grillo looked at his work and was inspired to take these 
short strokes and use them in his own way, adopt them for his own use uh, to create this wonderful pulsating grid of color. So bringing pointillism forward into the contemporary world.